uh, so actually first Clara, so what, what is your background? So my background, so I spent, um, I'm currently a graduate student at MIT and before that I spent three to four years in the machine learning AI space. So I founded a couple of tech startups and then built some other tech teams. Uh -huh. um, so I'm very familiar with kind of NLP, AI, ML, that, that, nice. that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then and uh, some full stack development if that's ever helpful. But so that that's another thing that I'm not an expert in, but have definitely built apps and, and sort ah, of you're a unicorn, you do everything. It's amazing. <laughs> do my best. <laughs> yeah. That's why um, okay, I connected so, with her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um Artur and, and Clara, if you want to give me exactly what, what it is you're trying to do, what like Artur, what was your idea? And then Clara, I I think I had a good understanding of what you were trying to get across but I, I wasn't exactly sure what you were looking for so you were looking for keywords but I don't know why or for what purpose Arthur do you want to start um, explaining the problem or should I walk through your uh, idea you I, had yeah so the problem oh. that we're facing is basically we have a, a question that we want to ask and basically we have some keywords that uh, are needed for us to quickly validate, like if it's problem worth solving, if there's enough data to answer those questions. And we thought of using your data set to quickly validate that assumption. Uh, what is the question you're trying to ask? If there is enough data about the, uh, the set of drugs and similar related uh, groups of drugs, and their uh, side effects and potential damages. As it relates to treatment of COVID or? Viral diseases. Viral diseases in general? Yep. Uh, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, um, I, I would say, you, you could probably start by doing like a keyword search just to find out if you know what medications you're interested in finding, then yes. Um, which I think is what Clara was doing. Yeah, and, maybe Clara um, can explain like her approach. <clears throat> yes. And again, this was, this was just, obviously we didn't get very far, but the uh, initial attempt was just to, so maybe taking a step back, I was initially, I think it's, I, I thought it was a great idea, but I was just a bit worried whether the, incremental value that we can bring to this conversation is worth the effort that it will take to actually do this analysis, given that right. people already seem to be aware of there being side effects. So it's not like mm -hmm. no one knows that there are side effects. People know that there are side effects. Right. But so that was kind of my, my worry just going in, given that, again, there might be other high value things for us to work on. So it's really just a trade off in terms of where we're going to spend our time. Mm -hmm. And so my suggestion was to do, uh, or kind of, I guess the idea we came up with was just to run the, some uh, the medication terms, so just to get a sense of what frequency, how how many articles even mention those medications to begin with, to mm -hmm. determine whether or not it's actually worthwhile exploring further. Sure. And so we just uh, started doing a basic keyword search, and again, the data set that I was working with was the process titles and abstracts, because mm -hmm. that was the data set that I was able to find on on the repo, and right. got that up and running. And obviously, the data is in fantastic state, so it was very easy to run but ended up finding the numbers weren't quite as high as we would like them to be. So I mean, there were like maybe 10, 20 articles, unique articles that even mentioned uh, uh, those medications. And again, of course, there's also the question of, did we actually have the right keywords? So we had mm -hmm. some initial lists and of course, I'm sure we can expand that list to include synonyms and um, perhaps kind of brand names. And I'm sure you can kind of build that out, but yeah. it just wasn't, it wasn't kind of anything where I went, oh, this looks very promising. But then right. the, other thing we found, I think Artur found one of these, the existing search engines for this data set. And mm -hmm. using, using that, if we just type in some of the keywords, we actually found a lot more articles. Mm -hmm. So my question was whether or not the problem is that we're just looking at the titles and the abstracts, like we're not looking at the full text. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, that was kind be of going to be the next step. Yeah, so I can see two potential problems where either the, the medication wasn't listed in the title or the abstract, or the name entity recognition wasn't good enough and didn't classify it in the correct label or something, mm. uh, or in the, in the correct column. Um, my, my hunch is that it's probably just because there, there wasn't any body text. So um, I want to apologize for that. I thought that it was going to be done uploading yesterday morning, and it turned out, or yesterday night, I guess, and it turned out that it was too big. So as soon as it like finished uploading, it said, oh, your file is this many bytes too big, and then it kicked it off. So. Oh. Uh, 
yeah, so I've spent most of today working on uh, trying to make it smaller. So uh, essentially, I just like, I changed data types, I changed the way that it's written into a CSV file, and I took the vectors out so that um, everything is labeled uh, textually and has a sentence ID per sentence. Um, that okay. takes up about four gigabytes, and that's all of the full text. Um, if you want, you can also add in the tables and stuff because they'll they'll they should mention drugs and whatever the medications else. Medications uh, as well. <clears throat> exactly. Um, and the vectors for the full text I will just upload in a separate file because the only thing that people really need to use vectors for is something like semantic semantic search or semantic similarity or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, but for, yeah, but for keyword search, like <laughs> the full text will be up in approximately an hour. <laughs> Uh, awesome. and, and beyond that, there were 4,600 new articles released uh, on Friday or Saturday, I can't remember, and those will be processed and uploaded probably tomorrow, I, I think, so. Okay. Yeah. Quick question. Awesome, but I think even just... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think even, I mean, even setting aside the 4,000, we should get a good sense of, of kind of general volume of, of relevant data, even just looking at the existing data set. So I think that, yeah, that right. should be a good start. Mm -hmm. So quick yep. question in terms of, uh, you know, being able to, uh, to use this data set. Uh, can you kind of give the wide range of things that exist in there? And for your context, I'm recording this call just for <clears throat> other people that may be questioning uh, so they can better understand it. So in yep. terms of the, these entities, what is in there and what kind of structures exist? Yeah. So uh, given what we had at first, I tried to make it as agnostic as possible toward the data model that you want to make. So um, there is a column that's just the full text if you want to do full text search. Um, there's a column of lemmatized text, which means uh, like basically normalized by the base word form for every word in the text. So if you want to do something like latent Dirichlet allocation or latent semantic analysis or TF-IDF, you want to do it over that text because um, it uh, has you know the, the basic pre-processing steps that you need in order to have a better understanding of how uh, documents cluster together and how which words are more important to particular clusters of documents or singular documents um, uh, and then the vectorized stuff like I said is just for semantic search or semantic similarity so if you're building a semantic search engine you want to know what's most similar to um, uh, uh, rates of infection of COVID among men and women. If you search for that, it'll give you all the sentences ranked by similarity um, as a function of cosine distance with the measurement of the vectors. So um, you can do, you know, it, whatever you're trying to do in an NLP way, it, you should be able to do it on a, on a different column depending on what your output is supposed to be. Uh, the last thing that you would might want to do is like a knowledge graph integration. So, um, for knowledge graphs, you would extract triplets probably, um, which would be like a subject object verb uh, sort of structure. Um, and you would filter that by whatever medication you're interested in knowing about. So you just filter by the rows that mention a particular kind of entity, um, in a particular column. And then that reduces your data set by whatever, 90% or something. And then it's much easier to hone in on, uh, what triplets you're wanting to extract and stuff like that. So. It's meant to be filterable, queryable, um, measurable, and uh, uh, modelable, I guess. And in terms of types of entities that exist in there, do you have a list of those, or is there some existing structure that you reused? Yes. So there's a column called UMLS, which is, uh, you know, UMLS is university, hang on. I'm sorry, Unified Maybe. Medical Language System. <laughs> That's right. So um, the, the UMLS uh, column is basically taken, it takes out all named entities recognized by the base sci spacey um, model, which is trained on biomedical text. Anything that's uh, uh, recognized as a concept uh, or a named entity, so this is something like rapid and test uh, uh, for like rapid testing, um, it looks that word up in the unified medical language system and then normalizes it so that if you have two different um, uh, chemicals that are actually referred to, referring to the same one. Uh, so if you have like uh, nitrous oxide and NO2, it'll look that up in the uni uh, unified medical language system and then only uh, output the normalized version, its first alias. Um, so uh, that's in the UMLS column. The other ones are, um, oh God, I think there's like 20 different columns or something based on four different uh, 
specialized named entity recognition models under SciSpacy, which are on the SciSpacy website. Um, the fortunate thing about some of them, like gene or gene or product, are, is that you know what it represents based on the name of the column. The other ones are not so clear, and I need to create documentation for it because I actually contacted the SciSpacy people, and they don't have any documentation on it. The, the, the documentation only exists nice. in the original scientific papers <laughs> where that actually did the work for the model training. So I will compile that information. Do you um, think we can find like, someone that can help you with that as a very uh, quick yes, task? I will, I will send that out to someone in the, in the <laughs> Slack. That would be nice. Perfect. Um, let's, let's try to offload you from these you know, granular tasks and make sure mm -hmm. that someone can help you because I'm sure there will be many people that will be willing. Mm -hmm. Sure. And it, is it safe to assume that uh, the uh, UMLS column has things like, um, like quinolones, which are specific types of bacterial drugs? Mm -hmm. It should, yeah. Um, it'll be referred to by whatever it was normalized by in the UMLS system. So if you look up whatever that term is in UMLS, you should only need to look up one or two uh, actual terms. Is there like a global UMLS search uh, something? There is a database file, uh, but I don't know if there's an API. So I downloaded the entire database, and that's how it was being linked in the, in the name entity recognition system. Uh, but I, I don't know. I think there's one called the, ah, yes, Metathesaurus browser. So if you go to the Metathesaurus browser on UMLS website, uh, you do need to. Can, can you send a link here in the chat? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I can send it to you in Slack because I'm oh. using this on my okay. phone, sorry. <laughs> um, or I'll send it to Clara also, let's see. Oh yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and you may need oh, to yeah. sign up for a license for that, but it's a free license yeah. and it's just for okay. searching. So but the system okay, is provided for So technically uh, this thing is gonna provide us with a quick way to check what is that main entity for a certain specific keyword, right? Drugs. It should, in theory, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that's amazing. And then we could just do the keyword search on that. Correct. Yeah. Well, that's in UMLS. So if you if you find that for some reason the name entity recognition didn't work well because the the recall is only about 80, 80 to eighty five percent. So there there are about ten to fifteen percent, uh, uh, maybe as high as twenty in certain articles where the name entity exists, but it wasn't recognized as a name entity by the statistical model. So you mm -hmm. still you know, if you find that you're not getting enough um, out of the UMLS column, it may be worth doing a full text search. Uh, okay. Is that a duck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my <laughs> um, And oh my I'm trying to solve that issue by, uh, so I, I got Google credits. I'm going to be putting up an Elasticsearch instance on uh, Google Compute, uh, or basically like another Linux server run by Google. I don't know if that allows me to put a port forward for like public use, but at the very least, it'll allow some people to be able to search full text, and it's really, really fast. I don't know if you've ever used Elasticsearch before, but uh, it's it saves everything in an inverted index, which means it knows exactly where all of the words in all of the corpus occur, uh, and so search is really fast. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. All right, so it sounds and like you could really benefit from uh, a person or two people that would help you with structuring documentation about uh, UMLS and uh, that other piece that I already forgot about. But <laughs> it's, it's being recorded, so I'll follow up with uh, some action items and hopefully we can uh, find some people to help you. Sure. Um, are there any other things that Clara, you need help with in terms of taking this data set like in an hour or whenever it's ready and just validating our assumptions? Sorry, would you mind just repeating? The connection got very uh, got cut oh, off for a second on my sorry. end. Sorry, I'm saying uh, if there is any other, like, if there are any questions that you have to Daniel, oh, to Brendan, in terms of um, like what do you need to validate our initial assumptions uh, in terms of how to use the data set or something more technical that other people would be interested. I'm trying to you know cast a wide net here and capture all the possible questions that people have to this data set that maybe you had yesterday? No, I didn't have any, I thought the data set was pretty self-explanatory, um, but it was helpful to get your, your walk, you have you walking through it, but I thought all the other columns made, made sense. 
Okay, perfect. The only yeah. other question I had just regarding the Elastic um, kind of search engine that you'll set up, would the process be that we could, for instance, just send you a keyword and then you could just run it? Would that yeah. be the easiest okay. way of doing it as opposed to getting set up on the server ourselves? Yeah, well, so I believe that I'm allowed to add users. I'm not an Elasticsearch um, like expert, so this might take me some time, or I'll, I'll ask somebody in general if they're able to set it up and I'll give them access to my Google account. Uh, basically, somebody who knows how to do this should be doing it. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I should be able to add a user and you will be able to query it. And there's a, a public um, a port for it like called Kibana. Kibana is like a visualization yeah. and a search engine. You know? um, and that should be publicly accessible. So if you want to run a keyword search, you just send uh, send an API call to, to the uh, server and then it gives you back a JSON. So nice. Okay. Yeah, Good. and it's super fast. Awesome. So then what we'll do is we'll start with the, once the data is uploaded, we'll start with the keyword searches based on the entities that have been extracted. And then depending on what answers we get, whether that's promising or not, we can see whether we want to run the full text. Right, so right. I think right, that's yeah. a good plan of action. Our end. Yeah. And, and, I, and think I think at that point, Oh, yeah. And then I think at that point we can make a call as to whether or not it's actually worthwhile putting more mm -hmm. time into this today or whether we want to pivot to something else. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's a, typically the general process that the teams should follow in terms of is this the task we uh, think is feasible to answer with the existing data set? Do we need any other data set? Do we need to augment it or do something like that? So um, hopefully this call will help many other people that are stumbling on the data set. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is just um, how do we, and obviously it's dependent on us getting uh, credits for cloud platforms and creating a real pipeline and just integrating all of the, these pieces together, but making sure that we can easily, you know, connect the data set to the notebook, mm -hmm. to GitHub and mm -hmm. other places. I think we're not there yet. I think we're still a couple days away. Yeah, uh, unfortunately. But yeah, let, just to, to give everyone the, the idea that this is the ultimate goal this week, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, quick question on that. I was wondering, and again, I'm still playing catch up on everything that's been going on, but is, is, has there been someone assigned to do that? Or I, I saw a couple of threads where people seem to volunteer to do something along that line, but I wasn't quite sure if anyone's really owning that piece of it right now. What's your take on it, Brandon? Because my take on it is there are many people that think that there are some people that know better and that's why they're not proceeding to implement it and there are just mm -hmm. a lot of ideas. Uh, in terms of like, Clara, are you asking about getting com computational resources or? No, right. sorry, sorry, that was, actually there were, there were two points there. I was wondering about the second point around kind of pipeline building. So, because even as a, as a new joiner, it did feel a bit overwhelming initially, um, not just from the kind of organizational point of view, but also just there's like a thousand pieces of code floating around. And I, for instance, hadn't even come across your data set until, so, so I got, so got sent the link. And so uh, it would be nice to start consolidating and to actually pull together what we have and how the different pieces of the puzzle can start merging. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was um, wondering so on a, that piece. Have you seen the GitHub uh, for Corona Y? Yes. I've and is that the kind of the most up to date or is that where things are going to be going forwards? I would call it the most up to date at the moment. People okay. should be saving their code there under their, their own uh, project folders. Um, I know mm -hmm. that the pre-processing code is there, so you should be able to take a look at that. Um, and yeah, moving forward, we should be putting all of our code there. If they're not, then uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, other people are sort of steering teams in that direction if they haven't already gone there so yeah we're trying okay. yeah awesome all right there are, so. there are a lot of people that uh, are on their own different tasks and they they haven't really figured out how to pull from the from the master github repository but yeah okay i'll stop talking anyway yeah no it, it sounds great uh it it feels like we have resources to actually accomplish this task we're just lacking the more technical progress, uh, pro uh, project management to make it happen. And maybe yeah. I'll, I'll step away from uh, some of the high level things and jump in into uh, details. Maybe Anton will be helpful to jump in and uh, guide the direction here, but I can see it as you being kind of the, the high level lead of the group and then having three, four people that just help you with uh, very specific deliverables here. Mm -hmm. Sounds cool. good. All right, guys. Thank you so much for jumping in. 
and I'll Thank upload you. video shortly. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Perfect. Bye. Thank you Ciao. so much.